Aloha. Uh, before I get into this video, because uh, I don't know how long it's going to be, but I wanted to <clears throat> at least <clears throat> send these many, many thanks and blessings to the people who um, who came through on the last video where I was putting the Amazon wish list out there uh, for the go outside and play gear that you guys... I don't know, it kind of broke me down. It was really, really beautiful that day. Um, kind of everything came in at the same time. It was, the timing on it was <laughs> amazing. One of these days, because I had been going out pretty much uh, on a daily basis, almost like going to the gym to practice and be outside and so on and so forth. And uh, one of these days, it was a day it was raining and... I didn't have my umbrella with me. I had a smaller little kind of cheap umbrella, but I had left it at a friend's house. And um, <laughs> I had put an umbrella um, on that list. And sure enough, the day that it was raining, me and a couple other people actually used it. Because <laughs> when I was playing, uh, other people could use it. But uh, yeah, it was a trip. <clears throat> the umbrella came first. It was right on time. And then the next day it was like the bag and then the gear. It was really, really beautiful. So got a few discs. Thank you so much to the people. I think if you remember what you got, I think I got the Leopard, the Truth, or the Emac Truth, a Heart Putter, uh, a little Mini the to mark my position, all kind of like... I don't really want to go through the list. It was, but it was basically everything that was really needed to get going and be comfortable out there to have the tools that I would need. So I mean, just the amount of joy that came was the the manager asked me. He was like, "Is it your birthday?" I was like, uh, "No, not really, but I guess kind of." Uh, it felt like that way. It was just really, really beautiful to know that you know people were there and and uh, really. So anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was really, really <laughs> super sweet of everybody. Um, I read the notes. I got the notes that where there was like three or four people that had attached notes to them. So thank you very much to those people um, who sent gifts and the notes. It was, yeah, it felt really, really good in that. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I've been out pretty much every day. The day before yesterday was the first day that I used the gear. I took everything out there to feel the weight and everything. And then the next day, which was yesterday, I dialed it down and then um, went out there again, tried some new stuff. All the discs are just like right on point. Um, the bag is way more comfortable and dialed in. And um, yeah, anyway, that was... On, on top of that, because it's kind of tied into this video, this video, uh, being out there, what's helped me a lot has been, has been tied into, uh, let me, um, has been tied into a lot of kind of, um, clearing and processing. This clearing and processing can, comes from the amount of focus and, like, attention that has come from shrinking down a lot of my daily interactions with whatever's going on and and really just kind of <clears throat> it's a deeper level of going with the flow it's kind of hard to explain because there's nothing really to explain it's almost kind of like the feeling that you had when you're a child like, you didn't have to worry about too much. You didn't have to think too much. You really kind of, like, shrunk your entire life down to... Um, it's almost like being in the zone regularly. So, like, kids are always in the zone. And what being in the zone is really is that you're not thinking too much. You're not thinking at all, really. You're just allowing your 
every part of your flow. You're allowing your psychological, physical, and spiritual flow to work in harmony. So whether you're playing a sport or whether you're, you know, engaged in whatever kind of activity it is, there's a certain kind of flow that involves your mind, that involves your spirit, that involves your connections. So <clears throat> having gone into that space and having shrunk down out of, like shrunk in my life out of all of those things that had taken away from my maximum capacity to even more so, has allowed a focus and preci precision that I didn't even know was there um, because I had forgotten it. Uh, it, it had always been there. It's not because it wasn't there. It was because it had always been there and I had kind of built this whole world on top of it. So this is what's tied into it. What's tied into it is what I've noticed is the kicker and what I've explained to a lot of people um, is the creative energy. Um, so we call it all kinds of different things. There's all kinds of different ways to call it something but there's one there's one kind of mentality that doesn't really uh, acknowledge this creative energy because that creative energy is directly related to the disassembly of the empire that is built upon keeping people from expressing and inhabiting their creative energies so one thing that keeps you away from inhabiting and expressing your creative energies is to live in a pre-created synthetic energetic universe. This is the simulation theory universe. This is the heliocentric theory universe. These are all these dead planet theorized universes that don't have anything to do with your creative thought, your creative intelligence, your creative consciousness. They have everything to do with the authoritative um, attack on your consciousness from the belief within a synthetic world. So <clears throat> all the individuals who still have anchors heavily deeped within that authority to think for them, one authority that individuals have that they that they accept is the authority of the bible mainstream religions the authority of western society the authority of like not being able to let go of the idea that technology and so on and so forth is the innovative you know ev evolutionary peak of our human interaction the idea or our human um, consciousness the idea that you are human, like to, to accept these definitions as human, is to accept the same definition. This is another thing that I'm realizing when you start to inhabit your creative spaces. Just as much as you accept the term human, you're accept that, or just as much as you accept the term like Democrats and Republicans, accepting the terminology human is the same thing. We don't see this yet. See, it's the same thing like accepting uh, like race like and all that other stuff. And like, th This is not to say that this stuff doesn't matter or exist. Uh, what the system wants to do is to tell you that in order to simplify everything, in order to make you just go from one extreme to another. So one extreme of fear, war programming to love and unity programming. Like those are extremes. But when you're thinking for yourself, you understand, understand, and overstand the meanings and purposes for positive and negative energies, for electric and magnetic frequencies, for light and the dark, like so on and so forth. <clears throat> you understand, understand, overstand, and activate that stuff. But when you're just watching a movie and then, you know, just kind of trying to copycat things, then all you're going to do is like this image that you're looking at. You're going to create this big ass mess and then. It's going to look and sound kind of kind of on point to some degree because on a macro scale, you're talking about something that on a macro scale, the majority of the people don't talk about. Like the mainstream media doesn't talk about the depths of the rabbit hole, for, for instance. So if you're at all talking about just the waiting room of the rabbit hole, you seem like you're a kind of an authority on reality in, in some kind of way just from the simple fact that you've mentioned 
like that the rabbit hole exists when you mention something like the like the the introduction to the rabbit hole or something like that to a world of people who don't even know a rabbit hole exists and you seem like a god in some some ways to some, certain people so this is what people do with flat earth conspiracy theory alex jones has done this with the 1776 conspiracy thing he's out there like he's saving the world he's, he's really out there saying he's sitting up there talking about you know what people i'm out here you know doing god's work we're out here fighting evil there's the good guys and there's the bad guys. That's where they want to keep you. This good and bad paradigm. Because ultimately what it boils down to is you not thinking for yourself. You having the illusion of thinking for yourself is exactly where the system wants the consciousness to be. Because it moving from a physical warfare to a psychological warfare requires your thought to be activated in some way to just control you physically they didn't need to they just needed to just lock you up or create some kind of you know whatever but in order to you know lock down a more complex consciousness the system needs to get your thought going so this this is why the system has entered in it started off more so with activating <clears throat> on a mac on a massive scale activating the macro mind control program with uh going like it went live even more so I mean, it was already there but it went live when late night talk shows started to talk about news so late night talk show hosts and comedy activated like the individual interpretation of what's going on so like John Stewart kind of bring bring life to uh even more so to bill maher and then uh, it it made it hip it made it like trl when john stewart came out and stephen colbert's first show came out in comedy central when they started making fun of themselves that's when the mainstream information news turned into like trl because you know mtv already existed before trl but when it turned into trl that's when it became some fucked up even more so fucked up thing but on the on the outskirts you're like yeah, everybody still watched it you know to some degree so this is what's happening now once it went to trl then it started getting into like real world stuff or, or not um, but you know like the the reality tv started to get more of a thing so this is what's happening on the other side with alex jones TYT, Owen Benjamin, Joe Rogan. This is the real world version of like MTV's transition from shit to like what it is now. Same thing happening in mainstream. So <clears throat> once it starts to do that, you're going to have people who are going to break away and like they don't even want to be a part of MTV or anything. So the people that are breaking away are the people who are thinking, they're thinking for themselves, even though they're only reactionarily thinking about the system itself. Um, so what happens in the aftermath is that you have a whole bunch of people who are thinking about prepositioned synthetic thoughts and ultimately they're still being cut out from their own creative energies uh, because they're only living in the, in the illusions. This is what I've been realizing with my whole approach on kind of like um, the, the YouTube and Instagram as a whole started to realize it even more when I cut Instagram out and replaced it with just like going outside. <laughs> um, it was a frequency that was cut out, like literally imagine like me getting a knife and like cutting a, cutting like open, cutting like a cyst or something out, like out of my side or something and, or cutting like a, a tumor off of my you know body or like digging in like that's a that's how it felt and still feels um so that's what people are living with the same way people live this is another thing that i can't thought about the other day is that <clears throat> creative energy this is how deep this stuff goes um in reference to creative energies so like the stuff that we accept so we accept like the bible and all this other stuff other stuff that we accept in modern reality is like this animal nature 
this is this is a side effect to this is not saying that we don't have any kind of um, physical animal connections or expressions what I'm saying is that um, repetition is something that keeps us in a certain frequency so what one thing that is repeated to us is that we are animals but the other side is that we are not animals and and when you go into the more spiritual interpretations of reality types of people <clears throat> you'll realize that they already have been saying that we realize that we're not animals we are more than we are we are the spirit we're the soul before we are the body so why is this emphasis so much on that we are animals because if you're animals, then you can have a religion or a universe that is that hates you. You can have a God that hates you. You can have, because you, you're an animal, you, you're a victim to the universe. You're a victim to the God. and then, But the God also, and the also created this beautiful place. And the God also protects you. So you're in this like destructive relationship with your own soul and spirit on a regular basis. So this is where, and, and what closes the gap is the mainstream religion. Religions, all the, the Bible, whatever people pick. So starting off there, that's what happens to our creative energies. We're not even, we're not even allowing ourselves to activate what is natural to us in every single moment of every part of our existence. We, we don't even know what that is. So we channel it into what people have to told us, people who, who have place themselves as authorities in reality have told us this is what's going on so they have told us that we are animals in order to emphasize that they have created systems around this that that um, hold up that idea that we are animals so here's one thing that i wanted to and you can go on i've given many examples of that prison industrial complex military industrial complex the the monkey evolution theory the um the meat eating thing the stanley kubrick thing the anything that you you know your your teeth down to your teeth like these basic kindergarten ass observations like look at our teeth some of them are sharp that means we're supposed to eat meat you know we're animals and monkeys do this and dinosaurs did this that's another big one dinosaurs evolution uh monkeys humans that means you know we're animals first and so th there's a real mind program with keeping you at a physical at best consciousness so <clears throat> but what i'm saying is that that consciousness is not just to keep you angry and animalistic it's to keep you from expressing your creative energies because like boiling getting back down to it like what i was saying in the beginning one of the biggest revelations that I've been seeing is that our creative energy is like, think about like what your biggest magic is. Your biggest natural magic is what when you wake up in the morning? One of them. Let's just say one of them because you can get really like waxing rhapsodic on like, oh, what is this? You know, what is the biggest, you know, the biggest, one of the biggest things, and you'll see what I'm talking about. One of the biggest magics that you have is your creative energy if not the biggest energy mag magical energy that you have is your creative energy what is your creative energy part of your creative energy is um like i'm talking about the bridge between the soul and the body not not like the ability to paint and draw and you know heal and do all this other stuff I'm talking about like the actual bridge. This is boiling it down to real bare basic stuff to literal stuff so you can go from there and what I'm talking about as far as like creative force energy and how it's being being harvested. Because we're talking about the bridges. The, in order to control the whole system, you have to control the bridges, the way the bridges, uh, the energy gets across because that's what these these beings or these entities are they're not really in the realms they're in the spaces in between the realms so the space between your soul and your body or your mind and your body is is a connection kind of like a spark plug has a gap if a spark plug doesn't have a gap in it you're not going to have a spark it's just going to ground out or not or um uh, not create a spark at all 
If it's too close, it's going to ground out. If it's too far away, it's not going to create a connection. So what, what the system does is it keeps you in that, that um, spark plug gap frequency that is not your gap. It's, it's going back and forth between grounding out and being too far away. That's what the mainstream religions are doing. They're sending you too far away and they're grounding you out. So people who are like deep into those systems, they get grounded out. They don't have any spark. Why? Because the Bible is their spark. The, the religions are their spark. Like the external versions of their connection to spirit and soul is the spark. That's grounding out. But when they're separated, this is the this is the like the spark plug of like atheism. So like atheism separates you so far away with your theoretical universe, and there's no spark there. There's, you can't think for yourself. There's nothing. So this is why people who are grounded out still feel like they have some kind of connection because they they're they're connected. They 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 feel like they're connected because they're smashed they feel something but that's the thing there's no spark there there's no you there's no creative essence there it's just ground so you're grounded or you're spread so far away so this is what's happening with the creative spark on in like a religious essence <clears throat> now what's happening um so that that that's what we're arguing on a on like a massive scale every day like we should be overgrounded we should be fully separated and that's what the scientificism scientism community is banking on to keep us from uh, activating our creative energies on the whole we keep fighting like nowadays another good example is Who's on team Owen Benjamin and who's on team Joe Rogan? These motherfuckers are all distractor, distractors. All of them. Every last one of them. They don't have a fucking ounce, nothing in there talking about what's really going on. Only thing they have is um, the wave that they're riding from the system that we're talking about in the first place. The system that we're trying to put on blast, these individuals came from that system. And they're still distracting a lot of these silly asses. Now they're calling themselves, these are children, calling themselves bears. Calling themselves, you know, whatever. You know, Republicans, progressives, aggressive, whatever it is. It's just another thing to, to consume your creative energies. So to stay on point, religion, creative energies, political creative energies, um... So yeah, the the spark plug is a good kind of like thing to see like what's going on there in reference to all these different things. One thing that I wanted to so another thing with the spark plug is uh is the food. So food is another one too. It's like the overconsumption of food, physical, animalistic. Oh, that's what I was going to go back to the animalistic thing. So you can see with the food too, too much food, not enough food. Um, people talking about this meat eat only eat meat like raw meat and then other people don't eat any meat like so there are these there's no there's no um, I'm not saying you know whatever whatever and I know it's more complex than that but I'm saying like these are the extremes that are being pumped to your mind this is what's happening uh, in order to control you before it controls your body before it controls your body it has to control your mind so back to the creative energies in reference to like the animalistic consciousness. So <clears throat> once you are consumed by the animalistic consciousness, that creates a limitation in your creative abilities. Your creative abilities are within every single thing that you do in every single part of your reality. And one of the main things that are obvious to me and more obvious now um, is the bridge between the physical and the non-physical as far as creative energies are concerned is heavily tied up in what we call our sexual energies. 
which are really, see, that's the animalistic consciousness interpretation of creative energies. So <clears throat> this is why when you have been conditioned into a type of reality for so long that people can say, well, we're just animals, right? You know, that's why you hear that all the time. You know, I have to act on my, you know, animalistic instincts or whatever. Like this is where, you know, the demonization of the masculine energy and the hypersexualization of the feminine energy and the masculine, so on and so forth. But just the overcharge, the over, um, the over fuckery going on with our balances. Um, so you have the animalistic consciousness that's in there, but that's not that's creating that limitation that's keeping you from activating your true creative potential from grounding your or not grounding yourself from uh, anchoring yourself in a space that trans like uh, that encompasses this physical realm. So <clears throat> you tell yourself, oh, we're just animals. So that when we when we talking about the prison and military industrial complex, where does that come from? That comes from the definition and the belief system, or the lack of definition of who and what you are, but the belief system that you are still just an animal. This is why I say it's so important to get into the definitions of who and what you are and start talking about the human story in reference to flat earth and so on and so forth, because flat earth in particular is about controlling your mind. It's about controlling, in order to control the, the, the physical people in the whole realm, you have to control the mind. So let's start to discontrol or disassemble, like break down these control measures upon our minds. And then that will take away the power of the system. But no, people are still in that sort of, you know, uh, we want to be superheroes and, and, and fight the villains and all that other stuff. So they want to be seen. They want to be seen for what they're doing in reference to that world. But it's not about that. Uh, once you really get to it, it's really about expressing, like expanding your consciousness to a space where they don't even, their their magic doesn't even matter. That's what I'm talking about right now. That's why the, the majority of the stuff that I'm talking about on here doesn't, you don't need any kind of, like, uh, like for example, flat earthers need the, Many some many flat earthers need like the approval of the mainstream media in order to uh, for flat Earth in order for them to feel a certain way. Like you can feel that with certain channels, they're waiting on that. That's where they're putting a lot of that work in. But look at all that creative energy. Look at all that work that they're putting in there that they could be focusing on. You know something else that isn't reactionary. That isn't you know based upon that system. So anyway. Um, a lot of that stuff isn't happening because the distractions of this the system are still is still working. So back to the animalistic energies. So when you're in that animalistic consciousness, you're also in that evolution theory consciousness. You're in that heliocentrism consciousness. You're in that Owen Benjamin, Joe Rogan, university system, Western society, post-Columbian, disconnected from spirit consciousness. You're in that let's just move on consciousness. Let's just not even, for the, when I bring up all the stuff, like, the, like all the stuff that's a side effect of white supremacy and racism and so on and so forth, all that stuff that needs to be healed, when I bring that stuff up and you still see people talking about you you're racist you you have a race problem you're this Th that is a side effect to people not knowing what to do and they're not having any anchors they only have synthetic connectors so on the so-called truther side the version of that same response is complete um kind of like uh like ignoring like ignoring these this kind of truth so people this is where you call where people call themselves truthers but when you present a certain version of truth like a certain information truth stream to them they can't really talk about it so this is a good example of this is that look at look at all the 
the the Tartarian, like this is why the stuff like the Mandela effect, uh, UFOs, uh, Tartaria, like all this stuff is really connected to um, people, or it's really attractive to people who don't have any kind of solid historical anchors. Um, the why the New Age is so attractive to people. Um, so like our history is broken in the Americas. This is why the New Age is so attractive to people who don't who have a broken history, because the New Age is the New Age is a new version of anchor points. So people are trying to anchor themselves in a new version of themselves and run away, escape from the old version of themselves. And that's not that's not healthy in any kind of way. That's not healthy for the individual. It's not healthy for any of us. And no healing happens. So what people are trying to do is just to, uh, in order for them to do that, in order for that consciousness to be successful, the individuals who threaten that success, who are the indigenous consciousness, the, the spiritual consciousness, they have to be ignored. Their storyline has to be distracted from. It has to be dumbed down. It has to be um, shrunk down to nothing. Like it doesn't even matter anymore. This is why you have all these new agers and so-called truthers, but they ain't saying a lick about the indigenous storyline. They're not talking about like what's happening here. They've created a prescription drug to get away from it, to, to act like it doesn't exist or it doesn't matter, or it's just going to get better. Or they just say like, oh, well, the ancestors, they're just supposed to sit there and hold the energies. They're, they're about the old stuff, and they're just there doing this. Like, no, what is your fucking responsibility to them? What is your bridge to them? No, they don't do that. They lock their worlds into aliens and extra, like this whole extraterrestrial consciousness because they're still running away and not really healing. So what happens is that you get this good and bad scenario and all this work <clears throat> that looks like real work and all this research. But ult ultimately what's happening is that these individually, in individuals are trivially trivializing what's really going on this is what youtube and social media and these youtube sensations and stand-up comedians are actually doing they are trivializing your experience so this individual like puts out there oh i'm such a sweet person christian you know truther and mandela effect and flat earth maybe and all this other stuff and like they they ride that fence forever and as long as you ride a few truth fences you seem like a real person like a real truther but you're still like you know regurgitating all this synthetic bullshit that you yourself haven't really done yet so what happens when you have a people a bunch of people who ride the fence in their empowered space through life and then they have a huge following, then you have a whole bunch of people who copycat that. And they don't really feel like they're riding the fence because they have a whole bunch of other people around them that, that are riding the fence on what's going on. And then they just, since it's not them who's thinking, they, they really think that they're a part of something. But they're not. They're a part of a whole bunch of broken somethings, like this image that you're looking at right now. It's not really anchored in anything. It's just like this reactionary sort of bullshit. It's just like, oh, ha, ha, ha. This is what's going on. I know everything. Ha, 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 ha. Like Owen Benjamin. He comes out, references Flat Earth, and didn't, doesn't mention pretty much anything about it or the depths about it. It's, he's no different. This, he is the exact, he is the perfect example of what I said is going on with the mainstream flat earthers. He's the perfect example of that. He is what would happen when the main when the when flat earth goes mainstream. They will take what the flat earth is, they will laugh at it, they will acknowledge most of it, they will use it to attack certain individuals that they want to um, bring down as they bring themselves up. But ultimately they will trivial trivialize the situation because it'll be channeled right back into the systems that they want to program you with. That's what's happening. This Owen Benjamin is a manifestation of the flat earth going mainstream. It will go mainstream 
for a second and then it will disappear because it'll they'll channel that energy into what the system wants to do and then they'll start talking about what it really means um, so he's the introduction to that and they'll get as much time out of that as they can just like they do with people like trump and bush and so on and so forth they're biding their time and then once they can't you know eat the time anymore then they'll they'll put something back in your system like an obama or something or to get you going this is how the system works because your fucking child mind accepts the world that way and you have no creative energies because back to the creative energy part so going back to what i said what is the main the main kind of creative energy that's out there it's your reproductive energies that's the bridge between so what is the main thing that's getting out there that's out there to keep you from activating on the soul the mind and the body your creative energies <clears throat> you have the porn industry you have the sexualization within hollywood in co in cartoons uh, you have the education system now being highly sexualized with all the LGBTQ stuff happening at a very young age, conditioning these kids, you know, get YouTube videos going about, you know, showing, they're, they're turning like uh, this pride that could be like in many different ways is a, uh, um, a short circuiting, a, a, um, uh, an overcharge spark in that spark plug in many different ways it's it's disconnected in many different ways that's being normalized and it's being trivialized at the same time too so you're having this acceptance of this disconnected synthetic world and and and, and an expansion of it and this is what's this is this is a, being allowed to happen because you have people who are in, on the extremes of being disconnected and on the extremes of thinking that they're connected. And they're both going to take the same route, not even realizing it. Because they're still sucked up in that world, that magic, that cheap magic that the system created for them in the first place. They're playing the numbers now. And most people don't even realize that they're, they're dealing with a, a, both a conscious and a subconscious mind control program. It's not one or the other. See, the system... The linear programmers wants to keep you in the, um, it's just a conscious mind control program. No, the true empowerment comes from disassembling the subconscious mind control program. And this is where the hypersexualization, the hyperstimulation, and the tr hyper trivialization of your reality comes into play. So the hyper trivialization of your creative energies dealing with your sexual energies is stuff like how porn is accepted in society, in movies, in music. I was just listening to a Sia song the other day. I think it was um, Distractions or something like that. Or um, Dest is it Destiny? One of the two. Um, it might have been Distractions. I think it's Distractions. She's talking about she's sitting alone in her hotel dressing room, uh, watching, you know, sitting alone, watching porn in her hotel dressing room. So this is how slick, you know, this stuff, and it gets normalized. It's, you know, she's just saying it. it's in a, it's in a, a trick. Uh, the trick is, you know, candy coated to your subconscious. So sex, talking about LGBT stuff to kids in schools, that's sex programming. Um, then you have obvious cartoon sex program, movie programming. Uh, even your, your, your food triggers your, your, um, the, the way the physical nature. So yeah, this is a relationship. Like I said, this is bridging. So the bridge of your creative energies is your sacral energy the bridge between your solar plexus which is your like your drive your fire your core your center be like everything like so the bridge between <clears throat> your core your fire and your root your root connections here whatever like you're deeply rooted to this physical reality and and beyond that is your creative space so your creative space and the, the thing that the, the motor that keeps that going is kind of like your uh, reproductive energy. It's kind of like your breathing. It's like your breath. So you think to yourself, like, why? You know, why is sex such a big thing? Well, sex, 
um, it's not about really about sex. It's about creative, maintaining the reality. The reality will not be maintained unless you have creators to create a consciousness uh, realm. So a body is a realm for your consciousness. So it has to just, keep, in order for it to keep moving, it has to keep creating. So that's one thing. That's that's one thing that I've realized that to not be subjected to. Just the, the breathing patterns of this reality are still a limitation ver version of this reality to you if you allow them to be. Um, so sexual creative energy breathing patterns that are only really meant to add to the creative experience are not who and what you really are. They're who and what you are in reference to this experience. But like I said earlier, are you not beyond this experience? You are. So do not subject yourself to that sexual animalistic, you know, sort of thing. Go beyond that. Uh, so what is beyond that? We won't know if we're still fighting about this, you know, red and blue bullshit, you know, this, you know, left and right, and all this other stuff. Not to say that this stuff doesn't exist, only to emphasize the point that this is being made to, or this, this system is doing this in order to affect us a certain way. To make us, you know, jumble in this, this image that you're looking at right now. Good and bad and God and all this other stuff. And, and it's just a big jumble. Why? Because the authority figures eventually are the ones who are going to give you the answers. Individuals who put stuff like this together, they're not really out there for, like, real revolution, real empowerment. This is all inf infotainment, truthertainment. I want Benjamin Joe Rogan, all these truthers out there, even the flat earthers, the same shit. Like I said, when you really get down to their intentions, ask them what their intentions are, how far they're willing to go. You'll see that they'll max out at the Bible, they'll max out at politics, they'll max out the authority, they'll max out at the physical nature of the flat earth, they'll max out at the mainstream media repairing itself or Western society repairing itself. Well, like I said, Owen Benjamin is a good example of this shit. They will never go beyond that. Because that's what that's why I said a lot of these individuals are the biggest threat. They're the biggest enemies because they, they are trying to protect whether they realize it or not. They're trying to protect the empire that which they claim to be against. It's disgusting. So back to the creative energies. <clears throat> so creative energy is actually the force. So, so that's what it is. Creative energy is that energy that you can, that's that direct energy. Okay, so that, like I said, what is the, like the biggest fuel, the biggest energy that's coming in? Creative energy is one of them. So if you're really talking about, you know, non-physical you, then you have to get, you have to start filling your reality up with non-physical fuel. We expend that non-physical fuel here when we over-ejaculate, when we overeat, when we over-consume psychological f garbage food, fast food, when we overeat uh, spiritual fast food. This is, this is how we expend our creative energies. And subconsciously, we overeat all of this sexual food from TV, radio, you know, even our relationships, porn, all this stuff. Uh, so that's how we are, you know, killing our non-physical selves in a, in, a, in a way. Like, you can't really kill yourself. But here, like, killing our ability to express our non-physical selves here. So our limitations are limited by the animalistic, so on and so forth here. So um, creative energies... Okay, yeah. So the non-physical creative. So now getting back to what I was saying in reference to the bridge. So actual ejaculation is not just, you know, that. It's, it, see, the way we see it, it's been trivialized. It's been trivialized to uh, Basic, the New Agers just call it energy, or they want to go into like Tantra and all that other stuff. But no, 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 no. This is very, very complex shit. We're talking about creating another space <laughs> for another 
sovereign soul to come into this reality? What's involved with that? What's the fuel? So you have the, the, the seed and the egg and so on and so forth. You're basically playing with magic. You're trivializing magic. The, the magic, not the, the magic that you think is the magic. No, the magic. So, <clears throat> for, for example, just the porn industry. So, think of it on a macro scale, because that's what this system is actually playing. We get consumed in the guilt programs of the micro scale. Of, oh, yeah, porn in this, and, you know, the food in this, and religion in this, and, you know, the schools in this, and work in this. That's the micro scale stuff. Uh, that's, stuff that, that's the stuff that the system knows that you are going to consume your time with. You are going to guilt trip yourself with that forever. Largely, people are going to live whole lives and not even get out of the micro guilt trips there or the micro into dealing with that shit, not even dealing with that. For, anyway, so that's one space. On, and, and, and but the, the real mind control programs are happening on the macro scale. So the, it's not so much about how little you is doing whatever it is that you're doing. It's about how the overall creative energies are being affected. So who and what is running the overall creative energy programs, and how are they affecting us, and why are they affecting us? So Owen Benjamin will tell you that the Jews are running the porn industry, but he won't tell you the the intelligence behind controlling your creative energies the entities and the beings behind like he won't go into that because his consciousness needs to keep you in the linear in the uh, bad guy programming the scapegoat programming of because this is the bad guy program it it's the the bad guy programming exists because you have to have a good guy program in order to combat that bad guy program. So they have to create bad guys. This is why you always have war. This is why you have the Jews out there with that whole the Jews mentality and that whole anti-Semitism thing is to ensure that they are seen as you know the 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 bad guys. And I'm not. This is not to give the the whole whatever they call themselves any kind of pass. No. They are definitely involved in some fucked up shit. What I'm saying is that this is how the system works and this is how the system is trying to keep you from going to the depths of seeing how it works. So they'll put people like Joe Ben Joe Benjamin, Joe Rogan, Owen Benjamin, and Alex Jones out there and team them up and make them fight and have Alex Jones be like, I want war, Joe. I want war. This is you and me. You're protecting the system. I'm the one talking about the real stuff. Ha 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 ha. Finally, Joe, you and me. It's like Skeletor versus He-Man. It's fucking bullshit. So, <coughs> creative energies. You're never really going to get into it. You're not going to get into that space of creative energies when you're um, <coughs> consumed by creative theater, you know, what is that? Uh, stage performances, creative stage performances. That's what's going on. And sometimes we do our own creative stage performances for ourselves. So uh, creative energies. So <clears throat> just think of like the macro scale of energy and energy expand, exp like um, energy um, usage. So the orgasm is a heavy, heavy, it's been downplayed, it's been trivialized. So the orgasm is a heavy, heavy release. Look at how much energy you lose, like, after, an, you know, an orgasm. Um, like, you just feel kind of depleted in many different ways. So think about it this way, and I'll go into the depths in, in the future on this. Uh, think about, like, the semen or the energies in, like, um, like, like salt. Like, we don't think about this, like salt. Like, look at how much salt is a part of, like, the electromagnetic frequencies of our reality. Like, salt water, the ocean, like life. Look at the life in the entire realm of the salt water ocean. Well, now look at the salt of your, of your being. Like, imagine the electric salt that's in your semen, like for men. And you expend it over, over, daily, you know, whatever. Like, look at what that energy could be doing if you channeled it into something else. 
See, a lot of that stuff keeps us consumed in the physical reality. We limit ourselves when we constantly use our creative energies to expand upon the um, <clears throat> one realm of thought in a space where we wouldn't even know that the other realm of thought existed until we stopped engaging in, um, you know, ex, ex, uh, what's the word? expending our energies in one way so in, instead of channeling it another way so <clears throat> porn and, and just e ejaculation is is a true expen expending of energy and the system knows this that's why it's using it on a macro scale that's why the internet is mostly used is, is mostly porn is mostly used to combat against your biggest creative energies that's what's going on right now with the internet as a whole. I was thinking about this, like, what? Okay, so the, just break it down real easy. The internet, what's mostly on the internet? Well, porn. Okay, so, well, how is that used as a spiritual warfare against us? Well, it's directly related to your creative energies. So what does the suppression of your creative energies do? Well, the suppression of creative energies keeps you from empowering yourselves it creates slaves it creates and so on and so forth so ultimately what it does in the, in like the like the immediate time is it takes away from your focus your precision your ability to create in the moment what it does is it keeps you comfortable in a reactionary in a reactionary response grid and you're not even allowing yourself to get into the um the creative space because you're constantly reacting and what what comes from reacting what, what what consciousness is mostly consumed by reacting animals animals are always reacting because they're constantly in survival mode so this is the loop back to the creative energies being expended on purpose on a massive scale <clears throat> and how it ties into the porn industry, over-sexualization, hyper-sexualization, so on and so forth. And I'll go into the depths of like the creative spark and so on and so forth with the salts of reality. Like the salt, like salt is a metal, like sodium, it's a metal. Um, like in, in the periodic table, when you get into like chemistry, like all this stuff, like sodium, like these are all metals. Like how how does all this spark? How does all this metal work together? So you have basically like a metal ocean, then you have like a metal body, and then you have like this, uh, um, you know, this biological non-metallic stuff, like the bridge between that. So like the semen is, uh, or the the like the egg in that relationship, those. Those you, those relationships that you have with those realities will be um, acted out upon in your creative works. So this is how creative energy gets trans transferred and transmuted, and this is why it's we're not even allowing ourselves to go there. It's because you know we just you know accept and, and react. So <clears throat> yeah. Creative energy also affects your time, and I want to end this video because I know the video is getting kind of long right now. But uh, always expending your creative energy is also affecting your relationship with time. So time in life, time in in like the moment, like your ability to express and like um, uh, inhabit or not manipulate but um, work within time it doesn't affect you so much in certain different ways um, this is why people who are not like expend expending that energy anymore feel younger you have more energy you have more life to you so this is this is another part of that industry or that whole mind that whole consciousness attack on us Take your life away. Take your, That's what the system wants to do. Lower your energy on every level. But it wants to consume your time, your ability to fight back or to heal yourself, which is another version of fighting back. It wants to control that by consuming you on the macro scale, on the subconscious scale, 
and then keeping you from going there by consuming you with making you consume yourself with reactionary programs within a linear conscious so-called conscious realm at best but that's not what's really uh, that's not your maximum capacity so the people who are trapped in that animalistic bullshit consciousness who are fully like uh, their polished version of that trivialized version of reality, they are the ones who are commercialized and televised to you. So enter in the Stephen Colbert's, the late night talk shows, the mainstream media's, the activists, the Will Smiths, the Jack Blacks, the Owen Benjamins, the Alex Joneses, the Killer Mikes, the um, Joe Rogans, all of them, they are all consumed in that reality. And they will never, they will never go into a space. I will not say never. I can't can't even allow myself to do that. But they're in the 90, high 99th percentile of (laughs) pretty much telling you to go fuck yourself in that world because they are on the other side. They're the ones that are keeping you from going there. So <clears throat> that's that's what I want to get to. I'll, I'll I'll make another video. Like I said, I've been kind of slowing down on this stuff, but I just wanted to emphasize. First, I wanted to em- to first say thank you to everybody who who came through and hooked me up with all the the equipment. I'm really like I said. That's why I've been making videos. I've been outside, um, and today I'm going to that Hopi dance, and yeah. So like I'm focusing my energy on some real deep stuff right now. When I do come back and make some videos, it'll I'll, I'll jump off, you know, this topics, and I'll keep as much as I can. But it will be slowing down, and which is healthy. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. But I really wanted to, uh, on top of that, I wanted to trivialize, or or to bring um, light to how all of this stuff is being trivialized. This is this is what's ha- happening right now. Oh, and Benjamin, like, there's nothing for me to say right now. I mean, these individuals are just. Talk, 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 talk every day. And then if you don't see, you know, what they're doing, then, I mean, there's nothing to say. If you're being consumed by it, then shit. I mean, fuck it. <laughs> That's it. So, yeah, this is being trivialized. Even, even like, these smaller YouTube channels who are just, you know, saying, oh, well, the bad guys are doing this and we got to do this. Yeah. Well, what are, their, what are their options of what you should do? Run to the Bible run to Christianity, run to the New Age, run to extraterrestrials, run to Sasquatch, run to UFOs, run to Area 50, run, run to, run to the Sphere Being Alliance, run back to the system in the soul disclosure program, uh, run to run to the woods and just build a fence and live out there. They're, all of it's running away. None of it's really facing the issues and healing the wounds that's going on and, and, and addressing the, the situation. It's just like, oh, fuck everybody else. Just leave it. Whatever. And I can see how some people are doing that to some degree because there is a pulling away from what's going on. But for me, I'm still in, you know, my creative energies are still, you know, heavily tied into interpreting this bullshit for people. Like interpreting how this affects people so they can get subjected to this bullshit. So, you know, I'll keep, you know, breaking this stuff down, but really keep an eye on the individuals who are trivializing this shit and just telling you, oh, yeah, just go about your business. They're the biggest fucking problems out there, even though they may they might be in your face, like writing all this stuff down. But it's their atmosphere. It's their tone. It's the way they're approaching it. It's their basically saying, hey, look, yeah. Yeah, your ancestors, yeah, they were fed to alligators. And oh yeah, the, so what? We're just gonna move on. <laughs> we're just we're just uh we're all one. Yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, it it's all good now. You know, those were other people. You know, oh, oh, but the empire that was built was built upon feeding our babies, our ancestors to alligators so they can make money. For the for the skins of that oh don't worry about that ah you're racist you know okay so the empire that's built right now was built on the blood and the the bones it's still sitting on native you know indigenous sacred burial grounds ah yeah what are you talking about like, just get on we need to we need to deal with you know like this the bigger problems let's talk about Tartaria let's talk about these empires 
Okay, well, the people who are in power right now, they are still killing our brothers and sisters on the street. We're still being imprisoned. Ah, oh, whatever. What are you talking about? God, you're so angry. You're such an angry black man. Just get behind Bernie Sanders. Look, one of your own people are out there. Look at Killer Mike. He's out there on television. He's on Netflix. God, you guys are so ungrateful. We gave your people one. He's on Netflix now. And look, you're going to have plenty of other people in the future talking about your black problems, okay? So let's just talk about Tartaria and extraterrestrials and flat earth, okay? I was like, okay, but the university system, the education system, that that you're trying to protect that the system the empire is built upon that education system is built upon not looking at the history that i'm talking about it's it's only meant to glorify the history that protects the post-columbian mentality we have to talk no 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 you we don't we don't want to address like we don't want to address the problems that are tangible, that are that we can deal with right now. Let's talk about the problems that we can't deal with right now. <laughs> That's what's happening. And constantly, anytime you bring up something that is very, like, in your face, tangible right now, that can be healed by one-on-one -on -one interactions instead of just debating on who's writer, nah, we can deal with this shit right now. We can talk about this stuff right now. But these activists and these YouTube sensations and all these other people, they're not going to go there. It's, it's another version of trivializing the world. So they don't have to do that creative energy work with themselves. This is what's happening in the truther community and the new age community and all this other stuff. They trivialize the world or they shrink down the world in some kind of way. So they don't have to face the creative work that needs to be done internally that will allow them to expand into the next level of consciousness. So they have to overcomplicate the trivial world, the simulation world, in order to make it seem and feel like they are, you know, bigger than something else. So anyway, I'll leave it there. I'll go into this even further. I wanted to really go into like the metals, the salts, the um the creative energies in that space like our, our brain chemistry our sexual chemistry our um, energetic chemistry take it a step even further dial that in with intention because like i said the individuals that i reference in here they don't even have any intention that's the main thing there's no intention there because intentions have been replaced with reactions intentions have been replaced with reactions that's what's happening right now. And you can only have intention when you have enough creative energy to do so. And you can't have creative energy if your lives and your consciousness are consumed by reaction. So I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for the support. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, from all my relations, peace, love, and harmony.